Hey fellow explorers, you know, a lot of people often ask me, Chris, how can you afford to travel so much? And the answer is actually pretty simple. After being a professional traveler for the past 20 years and having flown over a million flight miles, I've learned a thing or two about how to book cheap flights and not spend our life savings on every trip that we take. And so it's those tip tricks and hacks that I'm gonna share with you today. 10 of my favorites to save you money on your next trip and my first tip for you is to go someplace that's actually really cheap. And you know, you've probably heard that before, Chris, I wanna go someplace that's cheap. How do I find the cheap destinations? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you right here. We're gonna use Google Flights, which is what I use, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it so you can find the cheapest destinations from your home airport. First things first, use Google Flights, we gotta get there. It's pretty easy, just go to Google, type in flights into the search box and the first result that comes up is Google Flights. Now, the way most people probably use Google Flights is they type in where they're coming from and then they type in where they're going, say San Diego, New York City, put in some dates, hit search, and then you'll get back a bunch of results for flights on that day. That's how most airline search engines work. But uh, Google Flights has a really neat feature over here on the left called Explore. And if we click on that, then it brings up a map of the world um, based on the dates that you put in with your starting airpoint and tells you how much the flights cost to get there. And so it says, hey, uh, $197 to go to New York. Um, but you know what, we might find there's cheaper flights. We might, you know, we might wanna go to Miami instead because it's warmer and it's the same price. We can click on Miami. We can see what those flights look like right down there. But the more powerful search is to come in here and where we've got the dates, just to click on them and not choose specific dates, but select flexible dates and then pick a week, anytime. This will be a one week trip, anytime in the next six months and uh, New York actually gets a little bit cheaper from San Diego. We can save a few bucks. Uh, we can see Orlando's pretty cheap. We can see Austin went down like a third if we're picking any particular date. But what if you're interested in a specific region? Well, you can come up here into the search box and you can type in Europe, for example, and then Google Flights will say, hey, these are all of the cheapest flights to big cities in Europe over the next six months. And uh, we can see, you know, Stockholm looks pretty appealing, $579. London at 611. Uh, I think I'll pass on Moscow right now because it's pretty expensive. If you have a few airports that you travel out of, I live in Orange County, so I like to travel out of uh, San Diego, but I also like to travel out of LAX. You can come in this box and type in the airport codes that you're interested in, and it'll search from all of those airport codes to that destination. You can see when we dropped in LAX, London dropped down to be a bit cheaper because it's a bit cheaper to fly out of LAX. Now, when you click on these cities to look at the flights, and then we click over to view flights in a little bit more detail, you can even go a little bit further to see these flights or see uh, how expensive they are or not. Uh, Google will tell you prices are currently typical for this trip, but you can come in here to view price history. It gives you some analytics and graphs about the price history for this. So we can see, you know, 584 is pretty good compared to what it was before 53 days ago, where it was up at 618. You can also look in a date grid to compare how, you know, March 5th is price wise. And you can see that's like a lot cheaper than March 2nd or March 8th. You know, Sundays often pretty good days to travel internationally. Uh, I also really like this price graph feature because you can look in this way and easily see what the cheaper and more expensive days are. Now, my second tip for you is to set a price alert. If you've got a particular trip you wanna take to a particular place, you've looked at the prices and you're like, oh, I think they might get less. You can actually come over here where it says track prices and to turn this on, you have to be logged in. So let me go ahead and do that. Now that I've logged in with my Google account, you can see there's this little toggle right here. I can click that and turn it on. And now I'm gonna get emails when prices change March 5th to March 13th, and it starts tracking the prices right there. I just turned it on, so not much to track. If you prefer, you can also set it to any date, not just that particular uh, weekend. So in that case, I'll get emails when prices are low from Los Angeles or San Diego to London, a pretty handy feature. Now, another site that has a, another good price watch feature is Kayak. I generally use Google Flights and Kayak when I'm looking for flights. 
Uh, Kayak also has a nice feature over here once it completes the search to tell you about its advice, whether you should buy now or whether you should wait for prices to get cheaper. If we want to get uh, emails, we can check this little box to say track prices and Kayak will send you an email notification as those prices get cheaper. So it says right now from San Diego to London, March 4th to March 11th, we should buy them now because they're unlikely to decrease in the next seven days, but we can turn on our notification, type in our email. With Kayak, you don't have to create an account. It's easy just to type it in. But what I like about using Kayak to search for things, it's really easy to turn on how many stops. It's really easy to look at what different airports you're going into. Uh, and I also like these date filters, right? These time filters. So I really don't like early morning departures. I'm really more of like a, you know, if I can get something after 11, that's nice. And I don't really like um, landing late. So you can actually come here in the landing toggle and you can say, well, I don't want to land super early in the morning and I don't want to land super late at night. And so you can go ahead and set that and now it'll filter the flights based on that. Something also really cool on Kayak is you can see the prices, uh, that include bag fees. So if we look at some of these, you know, we look at the prices, 853 right here on British Airways, but it says uh, that doesn't include any uh, checked bags. So we can come here and we can add a checked bag to that. And then it completely changes the sort because it says, well, now that British Airways one uh, is gonna be pretty expensive. Like it goes up to $994. You can see that checked bag on that flight is $142. That's pretty crazy. Which brings me to my third tip. My third tip is uh, get the airline credit card on the airline of your choice if you're checking bags because many airlines, the credit card gives the benefit of first checked bag for free. United, American, Delta all have credit cards that do this. And the annual fee on the credit cards, there is one. It can be maybe something like $89, but you can see how uh, an $89 annual fee can easily pay itself back when checked bag prices are indeed this high. Uh, and a lot of these benefits on the credit cards work with multiple members in your family. So if you've got multiple members that are traveling with you on the same reservation, then they typically each get a free checked bag for free. The other tip I have for you to get free checked baggage uh, is to try to focus your energy and flying on one airline if you fly a lot to get elite status on that airline because elite status often comes with additional free checked bags. For example, I'm a United uh, Platinum Elite member, which means I actually get three free checked bags for me, three free check bags for my wife, three free check bags for my daughter. We can take like nine bags with us because I fly a lot with United and I regularly try to focus on them. And uh, nine bags, let me tell you, that would cost a lot of money to check all those. So when we go to Japan, we're definitely going on a shopping spree for electronics. Electronics, of course, come back from Japan. My fourth tip for you to book cheap flights is to search directly for the carriers that don't appear in the search engines. Chris, but don't all the airline carriers appear in the search engines? They don't. For example, looking here on Kayak, I did a search from San Diego to Oakland and what shows up? Spirit Airlines, Frontier Airlines. Uh, that's it. That's what shows up. Um, but what about Southwest Airlines? I know Southwest has a ton of flights because I've taken them. They don't show up here at all. If we go into, like, look at the airlines, we can see Southwest doesn't even show up as an airline in the kayak search results because Southwest doesn't allow the search engines to show their flights. But if I come to Southwest Airlines website and I search San Diego to Oakland, then you'll actually see there are quite a few flights on Southwest Airlines. And you know what? I might want this $79 one right here to go there and to come back this $89 one. And what's the total? 79 plus 89, $167. How does that compare to the Spirit Airlines flight? Well, it's 119, but what if I wanna check a bag on Spirit Airlines? Well, boy, that's gonna bring the price right up to 215. One of the benefits of Southwest Airlines, two checked bags, for free on every ticket and no change fees on Southwest, no refund fees. Uh, so Southwest can actually be a really good carrier, particularly if you're checking bags. So definitely beware of the budget carriers like Spirit and Frontier because the checked bag fees and all the fees they have can really eat you alive. 
and make sure to check out Southwest's website, any place you're going within the US, any place they fly. But there's a lot of other carriers like this too. What I like to do if there's a particular airport or city that I'm going to, to find out what carriers fly there, I like to go to the airport's website. Here is the website for Oakland International Airport and you can see all of the flights that fly in there and all of the carriers that fly in there. You can see Southwest is the major carrier that flies into Oakland. You can do the same if you're going to Asian airports, European airports, go to their website, see the carriers that fly in there. And if you don't find these carriers on the airline search engines, maybe like Volaris, then you can just go to their website directly to search there to get their search results back. Maybe their flights will be cheaper. Tip number five is to book one-way fares. Now, many people, when they search for flights, they often look for round trip on a particular carrier, but it doesn't have to be that way. And sometimes two one-way fares, one one-way from your destination to the airport of your choice, and then another one-way on a different airline coming back can actually be cheaper than a round trip all on the same airline. Looking here at Kayak, this is a search from Los Angeles to New York City in April, and you can actually see the cheapest round trip flight to New York City on the dates that I picked is Delta Airlines on the outbound and Spirit Airlines on the way back. Kayak calls this a hacker fare because it's actually not one ticket, it's actually two tickets. If you book this, you end up booking one one way with Delta Airlines and another one way with Spirit Airlines. If you do this, beware of change fees because if you have to change your reservation now, you may end up paying change fees with two different airlines or cancellation or refund fees. Another advanced way of booking airline tickets that I like to do is often booking an open jaw ticket. What's an open jaw ticket? It's not one where you need to keep your <laughs> mouth open all the time, but an open jaw ticket is when you go from your home airport to one airport or your destination and then you don't fly back from that one, you fly back from a different airport to your home airport. So for example, here on United, if you look, uh, typically there's just from and to, but on many of these airline websites or search engines, you can come to what they call a multi-city itinerary. So. For example, uh, let's say I wanna fly from Los Angeles to Tokyo. I wanna spend a week in Tokyo and then uh, I wanna come back from Osaka to my home airport of LAX right here. 15 days later. This is what they call an open jaw ticket for the first leg. Say, hey, here's what it takes to go from LAX to Haneda. In this case, it said, well, you know, Haneda is a different airport than Narita, but it's in Tokyo. And then coming back, uh, if I want from Osaka to LAX, and it prices that out and says, okay, it would be $2,000 for this flight. But this way you can spend time in country, go between two places. If you're going to Europe, you can do the same thing. You can fly into London, fly home from Paris, do it all in the same carrier. And that way, if anything changes in your trip, it's all one ticket. So if something changed on your outbound, and the airline has to do something, they can adjust your return to and you don't have to deal with two different airlines. Now, if you do decide to look into the open jaw tickets, definitely also search for two one-way tickets. Make sure the prices are competitive. Uh, often the open jaw tickets can be pretty competitive, but the search engines won't generally come back with the prices for those just because they're a pretty complicated ticket structure for the airlines to price out. Uh, it's sort of a like boutique ticket that not really that many people actually book. Number six is to take advantage of free or cheap stopovers to see another destination on your way to where you're going. How does this work? Well, an example is Singapore Airlines, that if you're going from Los Angeles to Singapore, sure, you could take the direct flight to go there, but you could also take a connection and make a free stop over. Singapore Airlines, on many of their fares from Los Angeles to Singapore, offers free or cheap stopovers. So for example, we could take this flight from LAX to Singapore, direct flight, $1,298, or we could take this connecting flight through Tokyo Narita, but the connecting flight through Tokyo Narita offers a free stopover in Narita or maybe cheap for $50. How do I know that? Well, going into the fare rules of these flights, you can actually see it says, Two stopovers are permitted in each direction in LAX, San Francisco, New York City, Houston, Seattle, and three stopovers permitted in area two. Area three, they cost $50 each. What are those areas? It's a little bit complicated to dive into it, but you can see you can get stopovers either for free or $50, which is almost free. And you can see Japan and Singapore for nearly the same price.
price. Now, how do you book one of these flights with a stopover? Well, you go to multi-city, and in the case of Singapore Airlines, they call it stopovers too. You put in all of your dates right there. You say, hey, I wanna go to LAX to Tokyo, Tokyo to Singapore, and then Singapore to LAX back, and then you search. I've picked different dates, so the prices are gonna be a little bit different, but then you can see on this particular outbound, and it's showing round trip fares here because this multi-city search works a little bit different, and it says, hey, here's the first flight from LAX to Narita, it prices that out, and then it says Narita to Singapore adds zero dollars because in that case, that was a free stopover on the way to Narita before going to Singapore. There's other airlines that do this. Iceland Airlines uh, has great fares from the US to Europe, and they offer great stopovers, free stopovers in Iceland. Uh, Fiji Air, you can also get free stopovers on your way to and from Fiji. Tip number seven is don't book too early. Now, definitely a myth in the travel deal community is that the earlier you book a flight, the cheaper it's gonna be, and it's simply not true. If you're booking flights, generally about one year out, which is often when airlines open up their schedule for booking, they're actually gonna be pretty expensive. Why? Well, because the airlines don't really know what the demand for that flight is gonna be yet, and so a year out, the prices are often pretty high. I find the sweet spot for booking airline tickets is somewhere between 12 weeks and six weeks out. If you get too close to departure, then it's last minute business travelers, and so the prices are sky high. You go too early, and the prices are high because they don't know how many people are taking the plane, but as you get into that 12 to six week spot, that's when the airlines know how Many people have booked seats so far and if the planes are going kind of empty then they start to lower the prices to drive more people to book the tickets on those planes. So when I start planning for travel, I generally start looking about four months out. So I get about a month of setting up my fare alerts, looking at the graphs, and then about 12 weeks before I really start considering whether I should buy the tickets or not. Now, the exception to my 12 to six weeks out rule is if I'm booking award tickets. If I'm booking award tickets with miles or points, then I may book those one year out because that's often when airlines do release their best award availability. Now, also, if you are booking award tickets, you might wanna go ahead and speculatively book a few different trips or dates. We did that on a recent trip to Japan where I booked one set of flights on United and another set of flights on American Airlines on different dates just because they were available four months out and then we did some more planning and two months out when we're like these dates look good on United but we're not going to do the American ones then I just refunded the American Airlines award tickets because United and American offer free refunds on award tickets many airlines do the same now, speaking of airline miles, the way we earn most of our airline miles is actually not by flying, and we do fly a lot, but the way we earn most of our miles is with credit cards, and not spend on credit cards, but credit card signups. Particularly in the USA, the deals for signing up for credit cards to get 50,000, 100,000 miles can be pretty lucrative, and you're gonna earn way more miles on the sign-up bonuses than you do on the spend. This video is not about credit cards and sign-up bonuses, but just to say, if you do wanna book some really cheap flights, cheapest way is to book it for free, and yes, you maybe have to spend a little bit of an annual fee, or you gotta spend a little bit of money on the credit card to get the sign-up bonus, but then you can book the tickets almost entirely for free just by paying a few taxes here and there. And now before I go on to the next tip, just one more tip about booking award tickets is if you're booking for a family, which I do now with a wife and a daughter, I have to book three award tickets. Sometimes it's hard to find three award tickets on any given flight because sometimes the airlines only release one because if you're traveling with a bunch of people, they just want you to pay for the tickets. But sometimes on airlines, if you book one, like if you search for one passenger, you'll see one award ticket. And then you book that one, and then the airline will replenish that one. And then you book the second one for your traveling partner, and the airline will replenish that one. And then you can book that one for your daughter, and all of a sudden, you have three tickets. And again, the great thing about award tickets on many airlines is they're refundable for free, and so if it turns out there aren't three tickets that you can book individually, you can just refund the one or two if you didn't get the third one or to the number that you needed. Tip number eight is to consider searching or booking your airfare from a different country than the one that you're in or potentially paying in a foreign currency. How does this work? Well, airlines, they look at what country you're coming from and they offer you rates commensurate to that country. If you're traveling, a traveler 
from the USA, they may very well offer you more expensive rates than if you're a traveler from India. Um, how do you how do you look like you're coming from India? You use a VPN. This is definitely more in the hack category, but if you have a VPN service, and I'm not pitching you one here today, but if you have a VPN, you can often select different countries that your VPN will route through, and you can try different countries, and you may very well find the prices are different, from the country you're coming from and also in a different currency. Tip number nine is to use a travel agent or a consolidator. Now, this may be counterintuitive. You might think, Chris, who uses travel agents today anyway? Aren't the cheapest flights online? And particularly for Asian carriers, that often always isn't the case. Uh, if you're traveling in Asia, definitely give a travel agent a call and see if they can find some cheaper fares. These are often the fares that are reserved for group tours. Sometimes you have to be on like a wait list before you get the cheap tickets. That's often how it works when we go to Taiwan on China Airlines. We'll call up the travel agent. The travel agent will say, yeah, I can get these fares. They're $100 cheaper than the ones you find on China Airlines website, but they aren't available right now yet for that flight, but I can put you on the wait list and then in a couple weeks when they open up you'll get the ticket and you know what somehow it always magically works out the lowest fare offered by Starlux Airlines may be available through hotline service or ticket encounter meaning that the cheapest fare is not the ones you see in front of you but the ones you can get by calling somebody up on the phone weird Tip number 10 is to book a connecting flight instead of a non-stop flight. And this is sometimes counterintuitive because, Chris, shouldn't it be cheaper if I'm on the plane less time, I take up less seats, I take up less fuel, and you know what, that's not always the case because, you know, everybody prefers the direct flight. LAX to Singapore, um, it's gonna be cheaper uh, to go directly from LAX to Singapore. And if you're willing to connect in Narita, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper because it's gonna take a little bit more of your time to get there. Now also, if you're looking at connections, you might consider connecting in a worse airport to uh, save some money. For example, if you're going to Asia, maybe you're going from the middle of the US, like someplace like Idaho, you can connect in Los Angeles, San Francisco, or Seattle. San Francisco is often considered the better airport, particularly between San Francisco and LAX, and so San Francisco connections often cost more than LAX connections do onwards to Asia. And LAX also has more capacity to Asia than San Francisco does. And so since there's more competition out of LAX, in addition to it being a worse airport, the prices in LAX are just a lot lower. American Airlines actually recently announced they are um, stopping their Asia flights out of LAX because they just can't compete with the Asian carriers anymore. But you know, fellow explorers, even though I've been traveling for 20 years and a million flight miles, I'm always learning and always looking for new tip tricks and hacks. What tips do you have that I missed? I would love if you would share your tips in the comments that for some reason just haven't made it into my head. And if you're going on a trip and you also want to know how to book cheap hotels and cheap rental cars, you'll find two of my videos on those subjects on the screen. You'll also find links in the description below. And as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of those videos.